Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at the volume of pyramids and cones for the Maths General 2 HSC course. Um, before I jump into pyramids and cones, I'm just going to look at what a prism is and actually look at the volume of a prism first and then lead into the pyramids and cones. You should probably know this. We've done this for some time. Um, first of all, but what is a prism? So I'm going to look at a triangular prism. Now, a prism is where we look at the cross-section of a shape. Now, the cross-section is where I cut it in half, basically, or I cut it across ways or lengthways, whichever way you want to look at. And if the cross-section is the same the whole way across, for example, I could cut it there. You can see that triangle shape. I could cut it again over here, and it's still going to be that triangle shape. If that shape's the same, then it's always going to be a prism. So I could have like a triangular prism. I could have a circular prism, which is known as a um, a a cylinder, sorry. You could have a rectangular prism or often referred to as a cuboid. Um, so lots of different things you could have for a prism. So what is the volume of a prism? Well, the volume for the prism is nice and easy. It is simply the area of the cross section times the other length given or the depth. So for example, if I had this particular triangular prism that we're looking at, if that was 10 and that was 5 and that was 2, the volume would be half the base times the height, which is half times 5 times 10, and then I'm going to multiply that by the other length given. In this case, it's the depth, which is 2. If I was looking for the volume of a cylinder, now let's say a radius of 5 and a height of 10. The volume would be pi times 5 squared because that's the area of the circle times it by the depth or in this case the height of 10. So you can sort of see what the volume formulas are for prisms. They're pretty straightforward. As long as you know the area formula, which you have a formula sheet for, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so we then lead into, I guess, pyramids. Now, it says pyramids or cones. Well, a cone is a pyramid, okay? It's just a circular-based pyramid. So I guess if we look at a square-based pyramid or a rectangular-based pyramid, it might look something like this. If I was looking at a circular-based pyramid or known as a cone, it looks like that. Now, I'm going to look at the cone because the cone's often easy to sort of show this. If I look at my cone, that kind of looks like a cylinder, right? If I sort of draw that around there, you can kind of see that that is from a cylinder. And actually, it's a perfect fraction of a cylinder. So what fraction of a cylinder do you think a cone is? Most people say a half, but it's actually not a half. It's actually one third. So the volume of a cone is one third times pi r squared, because it's the area of the base, and we times it by the depth, the perpendicular height. Now, that actually is the rule that we use for all pyramids, not just circular-based pyramids or cones. We use that for all, all pyramids. So I'm actually going to put here, here the perpendicular height. That's very important. Okay, so it's the, basically the same as what you were doing, like for, for above for the prisons, but it's one-third. Um, I guess, you know, if you look at the square-based pyramid, it kind of looks like a third of a cuboid rectangular prism, which it is. So it's actually one third of the area of the base. So as long as you know what the area of the base is going to be, and it could be a square, rectangle, circle, trapezium, although I haven't seen too many trapezoidal pyramids, um, but it can happen. Okay, so let's look at some examples to go through with this. Find the volume of this square base pyramid um, of height six meters and a base of five meters. Give it to the nearest cubic meter. Okay, so we know the rule is volume is one third times the area of the base. Now in this case, it's five times five, or you could put five squared because it's the it's a square, so it's five times five. And the perpendicular height in this case is simply just six. So now it's a matter of putting that into my calculator and I get answer of fifty meters and it's always measured in cubes. Okay. That is simply it. Not too hard, right? Next question. Find the volume of this cone. Answer correct to three significant figures. Once again, the volume of a circular base pyramid or a pyramid is one third times the area of the base, which in this case is pi times radius squared of five, so five squared. And I'm going to times it by its perpendicular height of 12. I simply jot that into my calculator to get... Uh, I'll Right, a few decimal places out for this one, 159 dot dot dot. It has asked for three significant figures, which is 
the first, second, that's the third significant figure. The one tells me it stays the same. So it's just 314 meters cubed. Before I move on to the next question, I'm just going to say that sometimes this question can get slightly more challenging because what they might do, um, they might not give you the perpendicular height. They might, for example, give you the slanted height, in which case, do you know what you would do to get the perpendicular height? Hopefully you would have answered in this particular case, if I put that as a 15, you would use Pythagoras' theorem to do something such as 15 squared minus 5 squared and square your answer to get the perpendicular height. That's if they hadn't have provided you with the, uh, with the perpendicular height, but obviously in this case we had. Okay, and let's go to a bit more of a challenging question. Looks a bit more complicated. We've got a couple of cones going on here. We've got a big cone and a small cone. Um, and it says here that a frustum is a portion of a solid. The frustum, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, a frustum shown opposite is formed from a cone. So the frustum is kind of this shape going on here. Okay, and it doesn't really have that top part there. So this is split into three sections, which you could probably do in one, to be honest with you, which I'll show you shortly. Part A says, what is the volume of the top cone? Okay, so I'm just going to just take those purple markings off. So for part A, the top cone would be this cone up here, which if we look for the volume of a cone, we know it's one third times the area of the base. So it's pi times five squared times a perpendicular height of 13. They have given that to us. The units are all in the same measurements. So that gives us approximately 785.39 dot, dot, dot. Now it has asked for correct to nearest, nearest cubic meter. So that equals 785 meters cubed. That's part A. Part B has asked for the volume of the larger cone. Well, I'll do this in green. The larger cone is that big one there. So that's going to be the same formula. One third times pi times 10 squared now. But the perpendicular height now is 60 meters. So I chuck that into my calculator. Um, we get 6283.18 dot, dot, dot. To the nearest meter, it's 628. 83 cubic meters and then the final part of the question will most likely ask and I'm just going to check it what is the volume of the frustrum that's that shape I showed you earlier so that means I need to have the big volume which is the 6283 I'm going to subtract the smaller volume of 785 which will leave us a total of 5498 meters cubed so look it's, you know, a longer question, but to, not that hard, right? It's not, not really difficult. Um, as long as you know your formula, which again, you're given the formulas for the volume of a pyramid of one third area times the height. And as long as you know that what the base is, then it's going to be okay. Now, to be honest, I could have done C in one hit, and I do want to show this. Um, I'm just going to put, move this up a little bit. If I want to do, do this in one sort of uh, calculation, I could have simply said the big uh, sort of uh, cylinder, that's the cone, which would have been one third pi times 10 squared times 60, subtract one third times pi times 5 squared times 30, and that would have given me the answer of 5498 meters cubed anyway okay so you could have done that in one calculation um, but you know that's completely and utterly up to you look I hope this made a bit of sense I think next lesson we're going on to some composite shapes so we'll put some prisms together with the cones and the pyramids and see how you go but again a lot of this is pretty straightforward because you were given the formula so make sure you have your formula sheet any problems let me know um, have a crack at the questions particularly some of the more challenging ones towards the end of the, the, uh, the uh, lesson thanks guys have a great day